You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to MD for Moms with your host, Dr. Carly Snyder. Traditional psychiatry, integrative medicine, or just someone to talk to, Dr. Carly is here to provide moms with personal solutions so that they may experience whole body, mind, and well being at this most extraordinary time of motherhood. Now, please welcome the host of MD for Moms, Dr. Carly Snyder. Welcome. You are listening to MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Carly Snyder. I'm a reproductive and perinatal psychiatrist, meaning I work with women struggling with emotional symptoms throughout their reproductive years. I'm also the mom of three fun, sweet, adorable kids, so I've been in the trenches both as a mom and as a doctor. This show, MD for Moms, is dedicated to helping women enjoy life more, to maximizing health and wellness, and to improving women's relationships with themselves and with others. So... How often do you check your Facebook page? Let's be honest here. Is it once a day? Twice? Maybe 10? If you're anything like me, you tend to peruse your feed when you have a moment of downtime. Maybe while waiting for the coffee to be ready in the morning, while the baby's napping or late at night. Facebook is a great escape. It gives a semblance of connecting us to our former lives, to people we knew back when we were in high school, to people who moved away, to people we never really knew but are now connected to via other friends or shared interests. Facebook allows our busy, hectic, and sometimes overly large worlds to seem that much smaller and more relatable. There's something really comforting in this. Look, there's so-and-so, and and she has kids my kid's age, and look— She's asking about this concern that I had too. Maybe my fears aren't so unique. Wow, that's so great. So-and-so is getting married, had a baby, and so on. It's really nice sometimes to see good things happening to good people. But there's another side to this positive coin. There's also this seemingly never-ending onslaught of scary stories and worst-case scenario that we are presented to with every time we open our Facebook feeds. Social media provides us us as modern-day adults with this constant barrage of tragedy. Children born with terminal illnesses, young women, new moms diagnosed with cancer, toddlers drowning in pools, and so on. And let's not forget the endless articles on toxin exposures, the risk of this or that, or in various solvents or what have you in bug sprays, which sunscreen is safe, which will likely lead to cancer in a number of years, and maybe no sunscreen is better. Who knows? These stories at the end of the day are kind of like traffic accidents on the side of the road. We don't want to look. We're scared of what we might see, yet we can't help but slow down, crane our necks, and despite slowing down traffic along the highway behind us, we all open up and read that these stories. How do I know? Because otherwise... These stories wouldn't get so many hits. They wouldn't be on our feeds unless we all read them. And as a result, our lives are infused with this constant state of anxiety. And it really is much greater now if, as compared to when our parents were young. And perhaps this is at least partially due to the fear that we are voluntarily facing every time we open up our, our Facebook feeds. And then we scroll through this proverbial traffic accident or many traffic accidents as it happens, depending on the day. Furthermore, reading about tragedy on Facebook kind of leads to a greater sense of personalized 
fear compared to reading a story in the newspaper or maybe hearing about it on the news. Facebook means that this could be me. This could be my friend. This is, could be my friend's friend, right? Because Facebook is all about me. It's all about my friends. This terrible tragedy could have happened to one of us. Maybe I, my kids, my family, and so on. We're all next. What happens? This leads to anxiety. Women are constantly expressing a profound amount of anxiety about their children's safety to me. And while I understand this on some level is a, has functional benefits, and I've written a lot about this, and we've talked about this on the show, it also really recently occurred to me that we're likely sabotaging some degree of comfort and a sense of well-being by being glued to our phones, and more importantly, being glued to social media. For many reasons, obviously, being glued to our phones is a mistake, right? We're less present for our kids, for our lives, and for day-to-day experiences if we're reading about things instead of actually being there, if we're texting or photographing, then we're not present. And I talked about this last week a lot, but maybe this concept extends to posting about events and engaging in social media altogether maybe takes us away from the happiness of daily life because it leads to more fear. Maybe we're actually reinforcing and paradoxically causing our own worsening anxiety by doing something that on its surface seems to be an escape, which is reading through Facebook. Now, Needless to say, the anxiety induced by seeing this like doom and gloom can be overwhelming and paralyzing. Seeing families shattered, women sick, children dying, it's all terrible. It's heartbreaking. And it shakes all of us to the core. And while it's tempting to suggest that the answer is to just unplug, to escape from social media, in reality, this is completely unlikely and pretty unrealistic for most of us, myself included because of all the positive benefits associated with using social media that I discussed earlier. You know, otherwise, how are we going to connect with that random person that we met in high school? Um, And sometimes there's something really nice about that. But it also allows us to relate to others and normalize fears, like I said before. But we still need to combat this anxiety. So what to do? One thing is to try to regulate the amount of time devoted to social media and specifically to these negative stories throughout the day. So you can be more present in the moment with family, with our lives. And obviously this is going to have a lot of benefits, which we can discuss another day in another discussion because it's going to be a huge talk unto itself. But another thing one can do is to focus on and really optimize health for ourselves and for our family as much as possible so that we feel as good in our bodies and in our minds as possible. And this will lead to less anxiety in general, but also less fear about health, less fear about safety, because we'll feel in control of things more. And our guest today is going to help us do just that. Uh, Erin Borbett is someone I hold very, very dear to my heart. She has so many titles that it would take an entire segment to go through them. I'm not even joking. Um, But she is a woman of the world. Um, She holds her master's of science in oriental medicine. She's a licensed acupuncturist. She's board certified in Chinese herbal medicine, a donor trained labor doula, certified Nosara yoga instructor, and an eternal student of the healing arts. Um, she is, well, Erin is amazing. I'm going to tell you about why I think so in a little while, but let me just say, this is a woman who has traveled all over the world to bring us the most amazing information in, has also really been deep and down and dirty, both in the world of the Chinese healing world, as well as in the uh, more Western medicine side of things. She's worked a lot with infertility, and we're going to talk about that today, too. So we are going to take a short break, and you are listening to MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. 
I'm your host, Dr. Carly Snyder. And when you re- when we return, you are going to meet my esteemed guest, Erin Borbett. And you're going to learn why she is so unbelievably special to me and how she can be so helpful for you. So stay with us. You do not want to miss this. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of Essential Liquid Nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take Essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone, anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 Now is your time. So welcome back to MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Carly Snyder, and today we have a very, very special guest, Erin Borbett. As I said before, Erin holds her Master's of Science in Oriental Medicine. She's a licensed acupuncturist, a uh, board certified, she's board certified in Chinese herbal medicine. She's a donor trained labor doula. She's a yoga instructor and she's an eternal student of the healing arts. She helps women unlock their healthiest self so that they can truly live a thriving and purposeful life through her virtual consulting practice. She uses custom botanicals, constitutional nutrition, stress, stress management tools, and intuitive life coaching. It's a mouthful. She's able to help her clients transform their lives and truly change from their homes, which is amazing. Um, after nearly a decade of private practice in New York City, where I met her, she has she learned particular expertise and additional training in the fields of infertility, hormonal imbalance, and chronic childhood concerns. Now, Erin lives in a small town in the Teton Mountains outside Jackson Hole, Wyoming, with her husband and two daughters. And she has this new, truly amazing website, erinborbett.com, which I encourage everyone to go check out because it's really beautiful and wonderful. So before we meet Erin, I promised before the break to explain why Erin is so important to me. And, you know, I've talked about my struggles with losing a twin pregnancy on this show before. And what I didn't say is that, you know, I was told that I would, it would be very unlikely that I would conceive again. And someone suggested I try acupuncture for for fertility. And I started seeing Erin. I was in such a fragile place at the time. I was sad. I was mad. I was so many things. And Erin took me in. She was incredible. She was so nurturing. She was immensely knowledgeable. She never said anything was impossible. And, you know, she was there with me through what turned out to be a chemical pregnancy and, you know, ups and downs. It actually was not very long. It took about four months and I was successfully pregnant with Penelope, who's now 15 months old. Um, It was definitely not the easiest pregnancy, but 
Erin was there for me for much of it while she was also pregnant until she had her beautiful daughter. And, you know, Erin was a gift to me. Um, I truly, I truly credit her. And I will tell anyone who will listen that it was because of Erin that I have my baby girl. So let me formally thank you officially with the world listening, Erin. Thank you for my baby girl. Mm -hmm. I, I completely think it's because of you. So welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Carly. <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> oh, it's true. Choked up right, right in the beginning here. <laughs> yes, well, it's Thank really you. true. It's so, so wonderful to be here with you and chatting with you and, and hear your journey so far, too. Well, Erin, can you explain for our listeners what you do these days? As I said, you know, I met you when you were in New York and you were working you had your own practice, and you were doing a lot of acupuncture work, um, a lot of work with women surrounding fertility and in pregnancy. I mean, you made me feel much better when I thought I was going to, you know, throw up every two seconds. Literally, I'd walk out of your office and I'd feel fine. It was amazing. Um, but you left New York, and now you're in Wyoming, which is beautiful, much prettier than New York. What are you doing these days? How are you practicing? So um, I, after the birth of my second daughter, which was uh, in February of 2015, um, I ended up taking an extended maternity leave with my husband, who's an artist who had a residency pop up in the Bahamas. And so we kind of, we went there for two months as a family with our newborn and our toddler. And during that time, had the opportunity to reflect on our life and um, and our lifestyle and the city we were living in and how you know we were interacting with our children in this city and and we realized it was it was time to make a change and we weren't quite sure what that change was going to be um, but we knew we needed to do it and I had this beautiful practice that I I built from the ground up I was an acupuncturist and an herbalist in midtown Manhattan for seven years and it was not an easy decision to step back from that but I had a wonderful team of acupuncturists that worked for me so it was an easy transition and an easy time with two young children to take a sabbatical so I closed my doors. I sent my patients into good hands of practitioners that are still in the city today. And um, we went traveling and we went to Minnesota. We went to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. We spent some time in Teton Village. As I said, we were in the, um, the exumas of the Bahamas. And through this essentially year sabbatical, um, I got to be full-time mom, which I thought I always wanted to do and realized was not actually what I want to do, which was a, you know, a spiritual journey in and, in and of itself. Um, and I also realized that I want to keep working with women and my, a lot of my old clients who had been taking herbal formulas with me, following constitutional nutrition protocols with me, they were still in touch. And we were still doing email consultations, and then eventually we were. We I started to do phone consultations. Um, it started with old clients, and then those old clients referred me to their sister or their mother. Um, and and I realized, wow, this is this is pretty cool too. I can make an impact, and I can serve um, from anywhere. Essentially, channeling wherever I am. Um, whatever healing location that I, I, I might physically be at and bring that to the clients virtually over the phone, over the internet, and then also bring my knowledge um, of herbal medicine, of nutrition, of lifestyle, and, and really help people transform their daily habits, which, which helps to transform lives. So right now, that's kind of how this this website launch evolved and and um, that's what I'm doing now is working with people from the comfort of their own home which is fabulous especially I have to imagine for women who are pregnant and postpartum it's such a blessing to not have to leave their homes especially when you have a new baby um, so we have to take a short break you are listening to MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. 
I'm your host, Dr. Carly Snyder, and when we return, we are going to continue to talk to my wonderful guest, Erin Borbett, and we are going to delve more into the exciting world of women's health, and um, we're going to learn really what makes Erin tick in terms of women's health, what areas, and she's going to tell us about gut health. Do you know why gut health matters? Because you should. It, ma- it really matters, so don't go anywhere. You're going to learn a lot. Hello, everybody. This is Coach Betty Louise, and I have a question for you. When is the last time you looked in the mirror and saw your amazing beauty and sexuality? 80% of women do not have a positive body image. 97% of women do not like something about their bodies, and over 10 million women have eating disorders. In addition, at least 40% of women are sexually repressed and one in seven marriages are sexless. I've just completed a book called Healing with Pleasure Medicine. What I will teach you is what gets in the way of your ability to see your beauty, sensuality, and sexuality. How to shift your perception to increase pleasure throughout your entire day. Okay, the place to find all of this information is Coach Betty Love. Live.com. One more time, CoachBettyLive.com. Look forward to connecting. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daily Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Um, welcome oh. back to MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Carly Snyder, and before the break, I teased we were going to discuss gut health, not the prettiest way to say it, but there's not really anything better. Um, Aaron, can you tell our listeners about gut health? And actually, I also teased, and I, I want us also to talk about, you know, what areas in women's health you are drawn to and why. So you can pick whichever question you want to answer first on that one. Awesome. Well, um, I'm really drawn to pretty much all areas of women's health. Um, I'm fascinated by transition. So that can be life transition or hormonal transition. Um, as you, you mentioned, I have a lot of experience with working with fertility as women are trying to get pregnant, either with their first, their second, their third, um, baby. So that's, that's like a, a big passion of mine. And, um, and, and another passion of mine is working with postpartum women because I really feel like this, that's an area of women's health that is just so underserved. You know, you, you, you make it to your six week postpartum visit with your doctor and you're kind of sent on your way. And, and that's kind of when everything starts to get real at home and with your body. And um, yeah. so I, I really want to, you know, help support women in that phase because there's so much that can be done and tackled early on before it turns into something that's, you know, more scary or more difficult. So I think that's awesome. That. That's awesome. (laughs) Yes. And so let's get down to the less attractive word, uh, but very, very, very important gut health. Can you tell us, tell our listeners, why does this matter? Why are we talking about the gut when we're talking about women's health? How is there any connection whatsoever? Yeah, well, it's a great question. And the short answer is that everything is connected in the body, right? We can't, com- we can't compartmentalize you know, health. And so when we speak about the endocrine system, we're, we're speaking about systemic health, right? The hormones that run throughout the bloodstream and the entire body constantly 
right? They're in a constant state of movement and a state of, of hopefully balance, right? And where gut health becomes so important is in nourishing that, that systemic balance. So nourishing the blood, nourishing our cells, and nourishing our hormones. And all of that comes from the nutrition that we eat. And so it comes down to two in my, you know, in my kind of general framework here, two main components. The one being choosing the most appropriate and nutrient dense foods for you and your body and your goals. And two, being sure that your digestion is in optimum working order so that you can absorb those nutrients, get them into the bloodstream, get them into the cells, get them into your hormones so that they can function at their best. So it's really the foundation of health when you look at it from that sense um, is our digestion. I mean, that makes perfect sense. Um... So you were saying to me via email that Chinese medicine has really known about this for a long time. Um, mm -hmm. And Western medicine is kind of coming around to an understanding. I can mm -hmm. say, you know, I remember in med school, we were told maybe once to ask about someone's digestive health, probably in relation to, you know, if someone comes in and you're screening for colon cancer. But beyond that, frankly, I don't recall it being anything that was discussed as a regular component of wellness. You know, as a general, how are you doing? Next question, how's your, you know, digestive health? It was never something that really was considered an important part of your daily routine or your daily exam, so to speak. What did Chinese medicine know that we're now only beginning to understand in Western medicine? Um, so Chinese medicine is an entire medical system that was developed centuries and centuries ago. And it is, you know, kind of based on the body as a um, microcosm for nature. So it's it's taken a lot of the natural laws and kind of superimposed them onto physiology and then developed a system to look at health, look at pathology, look at disease and, and find ways to identify patterns. Um, and within Chinese medicine, it kind of breaks the system up into energy systems. And one of the main energy systems is the digestive energy system. We call this, we translate it to the spleen and stomach. And sometimes we're speaking exactly about the spleen and stomach organs, but more frequently when I, when I say those words, I'm speaking about the energetic physiology of that system and its impact on the body. And Chinese medicine, I mean, I remember being in school and learning um, about, um, you know, hormonal imbalance and reproduction and even like, you know, kind of uh, mental states such as depression and anxiety. And the, the text all pointed back into the spleen stomach region as being kind of like the first brain of the body is in, is in the digestive system and the second brain is in our head. And so how are we treating our first brain so that our whole body can function well? Um, and so I always, I always kind of go back to that as this like, it's like our first hub, our first hub for our emotional well-being, our hormonal well-being, you know, pretty much every aspect of our well-being. And Chinese medicine has very specific guidelines as to how to, um, how to support this system, to maintain optional functioning, to heal from discomfort, to prevent discomfort. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool to see. And there's even a whole, there's an entire branch um, called the Pi Lun from Chinese medicine that only treats disease through the spleen and stomach um, energy channels. It, every, any manifestation of something you might have an ailment with, it, they go through that channel. So it's pretty cool. I think it's fascinating, and I will say, if you think about it just on a completely simplistic basis, if you think about two people and one person's eating a clean, healthy diet, you know, and they're exercising, et cetera, but they're, what they're putting in their body is nourishing and not full of toxins and chemicals, et cetera, but it's good for them, and you look at someone else who's eating the equivalent of crap, right, like fast food or what have you, 
you have to just even a mental image of those two people, the person who's eating well, at least for me, the mental image is a happier person, is a healthier person, is a more vibrant person. And I guess that starts on the inside. It would make sense and then radiates out. And the other person doesn't have the energy, doesn't have the emotional stamina. And how could they? Because they're not feeding their body what it needs. You can't ask the system to go if you're not giving it enough appropriate, you know, fuel. And so it makes perfect sense. Um, So what can we do? I mean, are there specific foods that we can eat that will benefit our this concept of stomach and spleen? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and yeah, we're going to, we're going to talk about foods for that for sure. Um, let's, let's go dive right into the, the nutrient dense foods since you, you kind of brought that, brought that back in. So how can we, and, hmm. Okay. So the foods for, so when I talk about digestive support, um, there's a few, few, few different things that I'm, that I'm thinking when I'm, when I'm working with a woman to boost her digestion and, and she may have a digestive, you know, issue, right? Like constipation or acid reflux or gas and bloating or something like that, or she may not, but either way, we have to look at the digestion and make sure things are getting assimilated correctly. So when we do that, we want to take a look at the intestinal lining, go right down in, into the walls. Oh, sounds pretty. Um, yeah, it sounds very going, pretty. Yeah. Well, but it's important. We are going to take a yeah. short break. You are listening to MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Carly Snyder, and when we return, we are going to get back into this, into the intestinal wall. Doesn't It's not pretty, but it's really important, and Aaron's going to explain to us why. So don't go away. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. So welcome back to MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Carly Snyder. And before the break, we were in the beautiful lining of the gut with Erin Borbett. And I say that <laughs> half joking, but it is a really important area of the body. And Erin's going to explain to us why and how it connects to our general health and what we can do to enhance our health. Go ahead, Erin. Awesome. Great. So first, I'm going to kind of go through three, three of my favorite. They're certainly not the only, the only things, and, um, but three of my favorite things that are, are important foods slash supplements for, um, 
for gut health and making sure that your digestive system is working at its best so that you can absorb all the wonderful nutrition that you're eating. And the main one for that is 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 um, going to be bone broth. And this can be bone broth that's made from, we want to always use high quality ingredients, so it could be pasture raised um, chicken bones, grass fed beef bones, it could be wild caught fish bones, um, but it is typically an, an animal source because what we're looking for is the collagen specifically in the bone broth, which heals and seals the intestinal lining. It makes it so that your body absorbs all that you need and nothing that you don't. And that is really key to staying healthy and reducing inflammation. So there is a million places now that you can buy um, grass-fed or pastured bone broth already made. Um, New York City has a lot of them. There's places online. There's a ton of recipes. It's very easy and low cost to make at home. And if all of this kind of becomes a little too overwhelming, there are awesome collagen supplements on the market now that are sourced from high quality grass-fed pastured or wild um, caught marine sources. So you can take a look, and I'm always talking about these things on social media and on my website, so you can always look there for resources of specific brands if that's something you're looking for. But anyone trying to heal and seal the gut, I recommend they take some form of collagen through broth or supplement daily while they're healing. The next thing is going to be probiotics, which you can also buy in supplement form, but if possible, I, I prefer people taking them in food form because you get so many more different strains of probiotics, um, and that's really the key. You want a, a, high, a high variety of the, the healthy ones and the good ones um, to maintain intestinal flora and balance, which is so important for systemic health. And you can get food probiotics. I actually just did a bunch of posts on my website, so there's recipes and information about this, but you can get it through lacto-fermented vegetables is a great way. These are going to be vegetables that are fermented using either whey or salt, not vinegar. And they are live mm -hmm. foods like sauerkraut or pickles or carrots or ginger or whatever you find, but they, um, they provide an immense source of nutrition and probiotics. And then my last kind of recommendation is um, more from a Chinese medicine standpoint, and it's we're kind of jumping back to the spleen stomach support that we talked about before, and that's helping support digestion by making by not having it do excessive work. When we are transitioning with something hormonally, we're dealing with a health challenge, we're dealing with a life challenge, we don't want to add more stress to our digestive system. And one way that we can do that is by eating cooked foods rather than cold foods or raw foods. And this becomes especially important with the first meal of the day. After we've been fasting for 10 to 12 hours, the best thing that we can put in our body is something simple and something warm. This could look like, like a soup or a leftover dinner or eggs, maybe oatmeal if that works for your constitution. Um, but this, this can be a big thing for women because a lot of women these days are starting their day with a frozen fruit smoothie. And it's really hard on your spleen or stomach to, to stay toned with that first thing in the morning. It has to first kind of cook it and warm it up and then assimilate the nutrition. And a weakened system, we just want to kind of save it whatever it has to do and just let it go straight to digestion. So I my... remember you you telling me to drink chai tea, which I <laughs> continue to do first thing in the morning. Yes, now, the spices, yeah. Question, What a, is there anything a vegetarian can do? In I mean, bone broth, obviously, for a true vegetarian is off limits. Um, is yeah. there anything that's a supplement, like as an alternative, or, or you just kind of have to throw your hands up on that one? You know, there are there are workarounds, um, and and again, we're we're talking about about how much digestive lining healing has to happen, right? So, this is this this may not like if 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 your digestion is fine and you're a vegetarian, like don't sweat it. But but I'm talking about therapeutic intervention for somebody who needs it. Um, so, 
there's marine sources now, which is very exciting for pescatarians. But as far as a like vegan, non-animal source of collagen, there isn't so one much. of those. But like I said, there's a couple workarounds. Okay, so we are going to take a short break. You are listening to MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Carly Snyder, and when we return, we are going to explore more choices to optimize health with Erin Borbett, and she is going to share with us some secrets, for example, to maintaining milk supply. That's a really important one, so you don't want to miss this. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Myra Fox, and I am a survivor. I am the founder of the Castle Lewis I Survived Foundation and the author of a series of books entitled I Survived a Murder Untold, which tells the story of my sister and I who were abandoned and left in the care of a woman who beat us repeatedly. Unfortunately, it resulted in the death of my sister, Castle Lewis, which is revealed in a page-to-page chilling story. After spending time in the foster care system, I've documented my suffering and my loss and ultimately my survival. I'm blessed to work daily in my community and surrounding areas to give back by helping others and feeding the homeless. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of abuse. You can purchase my books and contribute to the Castle Lewis I Survive Foundation by visiting www.castlelewis.com or you can call us at 540-999-8401. Thank you. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Welcome back to MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Carly Snyder. And before the break, we were talking to Erin about, well, I tease that Erin's going to give us a secret about maintaining uh, milk supply postpartum. But, you know, I think that we had talked earlier, you and I, that there are foods really specific for women of childbearing years, and milk supply is one um, one time period, and I mean postpartum, that comes to mind. But can you give us a sense of what women can eat um, if they're trying to get pregnant, for example, if you know they're pregnant, postpartum, et cetera, that can really optimize health? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for women, my number one is healthy fats. When we're speaking about any sort of hormonal transition or hormonal balance, like fertility, like postpartum, like pregnancy, um, Healthy, nutrient-dense fats are key. That's what our hormones thrive on. Um, And they just help with stress metabolism and tissue repair for the entire body. And a high-quality, nutrient-dense fat will be anti-inflammatory. So when I say high-quality, nutrient-dense, I'm talking about natural fats like avocados, nuts and seeds, um, and even um, coconut oil for sure is a big one. Red palm oil is another good one. Um, And even, you know, if you're um, uh, well-sourced animal fats, you know, uh, pastured lard, tallow, um, grass-fed butter. If you consume dairy, a full-fat, you know, version of a grass-fed organic dairy. So, you know, and obviously seafood sources and fish oils as well. So, fats are key. Number one. Oh, that works. I lo- I love full-fat things yeah. personally. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't? I mean, in reality, yeah. I like it too. Yeah. And so. If a woman is, for example, um, struggling to, I mean, I said earlier in terms of like milk supply, you know, I've heard of any number of supplements. I've heard, you know, everything 
under mm-hmm. the sun being used, but it does make sense to say if she's not well nourished with, mm. you know, as you were just saying, why would her body be able to produce enough milk? Now, obviously, there are other reasons as well. But is there any specific food that is more nourishing? You know, I guess nuts. Can I say to a woman who comes to see me and is upset that she's having a low milk supply to try and have more nuts? Or is that not a full recommendation? Or a full no, nut? I mean, nuts are great. Um, I would say especially walnuts. Um, they have a specific kind of energy quality for nourishing um, on that level. Um and when we speak about milk nourishing foods, we call them galactagogues. They actually have a long, funny name like that. And there, there are some main ones. Um, my favorites are sprouted quinoa or sprouted oats. Those are both amazing at helping milk production. They're also good for calming the mind, which is, ten, you know, there tends to be more anxiety when we're not producing enough milk, right, naturally. So you kind of get a two-for-one with those really um, grounding, nourishing grains. Um, the fats are going to be important. Proteins are going to be important. Another just kind of interesting one is um, shrimp and shellfish. So if really? your clients do eat um, seafood, they are extremely um, potent at increasing milk supply. And, you know, all the milkmaid teas out there and, you know, these are things that you could definitely tell people to try. Um, Sometimes it's going to take a a more comprehensive approach, obviously, nutrition and stress and sleep, which is, you know, a questionable factor for a new mom, but they all play a role in milk production. So, you know, while nutrition is is a huge component, it's not always the only thing. So, um, you know, if someone tries these things and feels like they're still struggling, it doesn't mean that there isn't another way. It just might need a, a, a deeper look into what's going on. It means we should send them to you for a consultation. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Well, that all makes sense. And how about herbs? Are there any specific herbs that you tend to recommend? Obviously, you recommend a lot. um, But if you were to pick two, um, anything specific you would choose for women of childbearing age? Yeah, absolutely. So... Uh, A big piece of what I love to do with women is educate them about herbs. They're easy to source. You can buy them anywhere. You You can use them when you feel like you need them. So a favorite one of mine is red raspberry leaf. It's very approachable. It's very safe. It's what we call um, kind of a uterine tonic. You can drink it mm-hmm. as a tea. You can take it as a tincture. It's great for fertility. It's great for postpartum. Um, and my other really favorite herb these days for new moms is ashwagandha. It's what we mm-hmm. call an adaptogen, and it helps the body adapt to new stress, which you know, what more stressful change than new motherhood, right? With sleep deprivation and all these new demands on the body. And it it just kind of helps the body absorb it a little bit better and keep going a little bit better. It helps the body adapt to the new situation. And there's a few other adaptogens that I like, but ashwagandha is a really safe one that tends to work well for for most people. And I think... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I always thought that ashwagandha is also known to have mood stabilizing properties in terms of limiting anxiety, limiting um, depressive symptoms, kind of giving a calming sense um, in that adaptogenic way. You know, mm-hmm. it's not going to over yep. or under shoot, mm-hmm. but it can be really effective. Um, we have to take another short break. You are listening to MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Carly Snyder. And when we return, we are going to learn from Erin kind of her last thoughts, her most important little nuggets for us. And you don't want to miss this because she is so fabulous. And I'm sure her nuggets are going to be worthy of your time. And I want to hear them. So you must want to hear them, too. Stay tuned. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted. And every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, know there is hope. There is help. 
there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Horses. Mystical. Present. Past. And future. All in one. Wild. Free. Domestic. And healing. For everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Jenny Friend is a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified clinical sexologist, commonly known as a sex therapist, with over 30 years of experience in the field of sexuality. She's been a researcher and teacher and is further trained in human development over the lifespan. She's also a published author and a radio personality. Her specialized training in lifespan developments means she can help individuals, couples, and families through difficult developmental phases. Her primary ways of working are through the tools of cognitive, behavioral, and psychoenergetics theories and techniques. Couples, individual men and women, and families are also welcome. She can meet in her office in Costa Mesa, California, or on the Internet through Skype at Jenny Friend MFT. Call 714-210-9200. You can also send an email from her website at www.centerforclarity.org. That phone number again is 714-210-9200. So welcome back to MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Carly Snyder, and we have had such a great show today with Erin Borbett. I I found this so interesting, so enlightening, and so helpful. So thank you. Any last thoughts you want to add for us? Um, What takeaways do you want our listeners to come away with today? So um, my you know, kind of biggest, biggest passion for everyone listening and for every woman really is, is to own her health and to know that she can be her own best preventative health practitioner or her own best healer, that, that your body is wise and it, it wants to be in balance. It wants to be in health and the things that it is communicating to you are, are in your best interest and to, to trust, take that leap and trust your intuition and trust your journey, you know, while you're going through whatever you're going through, um, educating yourself on what nourishing nourishes your unique body and checking in every single day, what works, you know, at one point in your life might not work when you're going through something else. Our, our constitutions are constantly changing and evolving and our life is changing and evolving. So, 
it's really creating a daily conversation with ourselves about health. And that's like, that's true and lasting empowerment. That makes perfect sense. And Erin, how can our listeners find you? You can find me at Erin Borbet, E-R-I-N-B-O-R-B-E-T dot com. And um, I'm on social media on Instagram. That's the one place you'll pretty much find me. I try and tunnel vision it. And um, also I do keep a fairly regular blog and my newsletter comes out every four to six weeks. And you can find links to those through the my website, which I posted on my blog yesterday with links. So you can find those right. there. And thank you so much for joining us. I would love to have you come back again because I think there's so much more we can talk about and learn from you because you're a wealth of knowledge. So thank you. And thank you to our listeners for joining us today. We learned some really important things about women's holistic wellness. And I, for one, feel empowered to make some lasting positive changes for my health and for that of my patients. And I really hope you feel the same. As always, I encourage you to reach out to me with your questions and comments. Please email me at cs at carlysnydermd.com and I will happily answer your questions live on the air. I'm really looking forward to getting to know you and to introducing you to more amazing people over the coming months. Next week, we're going to talk with Dr. Brian Levine, who's a reproductive endocrinologist in New York City. He is truly one of the best of the best, um, and he's going to give us some practical tips to enhancing fertility. He'll discuss fact versus fiction regarding the Zika epidemic and what it means for us in the U.S., and he'll kind of give us some insight into the whole reproductive world, And because it can be a pretty overwhelming place, but he makes it less overwhelming and warmer. So please come back. Um, so yes, next week, next Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern on Tune In Radio and BBM Global Network. MD for Moms, you are listening to MD for Moms. I am your host, Carly Snyder, and thank you so much for listening. Until next time, be well and enjoy life. You've been listening to MD for Moms with your host, Dr. Carly Snyder. Please join us each and every week for answers to the many challenging issues moms face today on the next episode of Dr. Carly's MD for Moms. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.